Okay, good evening. So by now you should have finished our first handout article, The Power of Academic Conversations by Sheila Gibson and finished the first homework. Congratulations. Uh, now, now we're going to get into introducing our course reader in which we'll be reading a few, a number of articles uh, during the semester. And those articles will also relate to our two full length nonfiction books too. So this is original copy, uh, Rereading America. It's all pretty beat up. I've been using this for a lot of years. This is a course reader that uh, ha has a bunch of articles by professional writers, a lot of famous writers on various uh, issues uh, facing America in the past, uh, present, and also the future. And uh, it really should inspire a lot of critical thinking. So I wanted to introduce that course reader. And, and, the, and that course reader will immediately get into uh, the first big thing we'll be talking about this semester is trying to be a great critical reader, thinker, and writer. So, so let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, what, why, why did I assign that this this uh, course reader article? There, there are a lot of course readers uh, that uh, college teachers use in English One A, uh, so, so they have a, a great uh, liberty to to assign uh, well, uh, the reader that that they feel is best. But why did I choose Rereading America? And why is the title Rereading America? Probably should get, give you a lot of questions right away, but. Uh, just go back to the, uh, it's long ago, the, the 2004 election, presidential election. That was, uh, you know, you know, Barack Obama won in 2008, and then he also won in 2012. But in 2004 presidential election, the Republicans were dominating. And jo George W. Bush, uh, the incumbent president, ran against a senator, a Democratic senator named John Kerry. Now, George Bush uh, was basically... Uh, Side of one of his strengths is being very decisive, you know, firm in his beliefs. Uh, so so the, uh, that was one of the reasons why he was elected president. You know, uh, he, he was able to win the, uh, the, the election before uh, the election before o o over Al Gore. And that now he was running again, you know, for his second term and he was facing John Kerry. Uh, but of course, he, John Kerry was a great rival. But but why was John Kerry? Uh, so George Bush was very, was very firm in his beliefs. But why was uh, John Kerry criticized by Bush? Uh, do, do you remember uh, what 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 were what was some of the weaknesses that John Kerry had? Well, one of the weaknesses that that George Bush tried to try to uh, uh, try, try to uh, argue against John Kerry was that hey, th this guy's a flip flopper. Oh, it's not flip flop shoes. Is that uh, flip flopper means that uh, he's not really firm in his beliefs. He might say, oh, I believe this, but then on the other hand, I believe this. So it, it, he was George Bush was trying to paint John Kerry as a guy. Who was like you didn't really know where he stood. Like he would believe one thing and then he would say another thing. You know he would be like like th thinking aloud. Uh, he was saying that's not a really decisive leader. We, we, as a president, we actually need a decisive leader. So he was basically criticizing John Kerry as a flip flopper. And think about it, uh, especially in the past, even today, uh, do, do a lot in terms of a leader. Or what what do we look for in a person? We we probably think a person is really he has to be really decisive and firm in his belief. Just like writing an essay, right? You know, like you, you actually had had to be like, oh, great. A lot of students say, yeah, right, I had to have a strong thesis statement, you know, and argue my point, right? But it's, and, and is that really, is that really a, a, a cherished belief in us? You know, have a strong belief and really prove, pr prove yourself, prove that belief, uh, you know, by writing a great essay or being a great president, you know, basically leading our country. Yes, like that's what a lot of people like in America, right? You know, our leaders, right? Like one of our myths, you know, one of our uh, attributes that we see in a leader is someone who, who, who can actually, uh, push across one, one firm belief and strength remain steadfast. So George Bush won the election because he was basically, uh, one thing he did was basically criticize John Kerry as a flip-flopper and one who's not firm in his beliefs, right? But today, what do you think? You know, as we go through a lot of our problems of today and also the past, is it really best to have one firm belief, you know, when we argue about issues or try to, try to make our world and country better? Is it really, is it really great to have a leader or, or us as a people to, to have firm belief and basically stick to it? Well, actually, one of the great things about college, you know, in, in this class is that, hey, college, they, they actually w w want you to basically uh, think about other things that just still because the world is a gray area. Right. It's not, just not one firm belief. Right. Because because basically you can actually think one thing, but actually the other side may actually have valid points. And sometimes we're entering a gray area, the middle. Right. That middle ground where it's a gray area that, hey, you know, like it's a really complex issue. There may not be a, a, a one firm way to go about it or one right, one right way or, or one wrong way. It's basically an issue that we should think about and it's really complex and that we should really discuss a lot and basically argue, debate, discuss, 
uh, agree, disagree, th think, think about the other side and basically sh sh try to, to basically uh, get a hold of a complex issue. So the gray area is what I want you to explore in college. You know, like the, the critical thinker really, really go, go, goes in, in, into, into the gray area. Uh, and basically, I encourage you to write essays like that too, right? Our, our world is, is not really a simple thing where we have old essays style where we actually, where we actually have a thesis date where you try to prove it. That's not really the real world. The real world is actually, you know, there may be a complex issue. Like when you write an essay, there actually may be, you may be have a mixed view. You, you know, you may feel one, in one way I feel this, however, there's other points and I'm still exploring, right? I have a mixed view and it's a complex issue so I'm will, willing to listen. So that's re one reason why I explore why I'm assigned the rereading America because because that that a lot of those articles is sports a gray area in particular our American cultural myths right it really gets into our American cultural myths and, and how it may impede our critical thinking or basically it's kind of like an obstacle to our critical thinking uh, so basically what is an American cultural myth It's basically our ideas set of beliefs customs our way of thinking about the world and it's a cultural myth that that a lot of Americans share. But it, it, is, is it the right way to go? Are, are those myths right? Are, are they true? Well, they may be true. They may be false. But, but it's something that influences us as Americans uh, to really think about the world. And if, if you think a certain way, like a, cert, like a certain gender behaves this way or, or, or a certain ethnicity is like this, that may impede your, 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 your critical thinking. So you have to sort of think about um, our critical myths, culture, our, our cultural myths in a critical way. So it's really important to, to really to really uh, question our critical myths. I mean, question our cultural beliefs uh, in, in, that, in that sense, right? So basically, uh, we're really going to be exploring a lot of our American cultural myths, starting with our, our myth of the model American family, which is related to Glass Castle. So the, our first nonfiction book will relate to, to, to our study of, of the, our first myth, the model American family. We're also going to get into our, the myth of education, you know, how we look at education in America. We're also going to get into the myth of uh, the e individual opportunity, you know, individual opportunity where we're going out to, into the wider world from the family to the in, uh, world of individual opportunity in America. What does that mean? That's very controversial. We'll get into the myth of education. Uh, we'll also do that. We'll also get into the myth of the melting pot, race or ethnicity or the myth of race of superiority. So that's really controversial. We're going to be getting into a lot of our beliefs that way and critically discussing it. And also the myth, following the myth of gender. Now, that's a really a great issue too, right? How, how, how do real men act? How do real women act, right? So we're really going to get into a lot of those myths. And I encourage you to really think critically about that. And when you write essays, to not really just, oh, I just got to prove my thesis statement, you know, with strong things. Well, that, that's not really the real world. The real world is a little bit more complex than that. Than that. So that, that's how we're going to actually get into the, our, our uh, class to really be a critical thinker. What is a critical thinker? Uh, we'll also be exploring that. Um, uh, your future homework assignment will be you telling me what you think a critical thinker is. There is no right or wrong answer. There are many aspects to being a critical thinker, a reader, and writer. But one favorite thing that I like to say about a critical thinker is they really engage. Instead of one worldview or instead of one way to go, they actually uh, delight in getting multiple perspectives or multiple opinions from people, being open-minded to basically accept, listen to, not listen to, discuss different views, point of view, perspectives, have an open mind. Basically, keep on discussing. Uh, you, you, you may actually may, may modify your view. You might go, okay, you know, you, you have two right things, but I disagree with you in three things. However, our final thing, well, we may, may mutually agree on something that we, we both have, have mutual agreement on. So basically, at the end of the day, you may choose not to agree with the other person, but that that, that is your right. But the key is to remain open-minded to different views and consider multiple perspectives instead of just one way to go. So that's kind of like my favorite thing of critical thinker to, to basically uh, engage in multiple perspectives. Just don't think that your way is the right way. Be open-minded to discuss it. And you might learn something too, right? So be open-minded, discuss, respect each other's opinions. Don't really shut each other's out. You know, protesting is really great. When people protest, that's really great. But what do you see there? Sometimes on TV, you just see two sides screaming at each other, right? Are they really listening to each other? Well, the best way to for us to solve our problems is eventually try to listen to each other, try to get some common ground, you know, and try to proceed forward with a solution that may work for both of us. You know, we may not be ever in total agreement. Uh, you know, we may have different political beliefs and it may be tough to get really total agreement, but at least try to be respect each other's opinions and try to get a solution to some of our common problems in the world, just like the coronavirus or different things. You know, upcoming election, there's going to be a lot of big issues with our economy, the virus 
and things for us to solve and, and for us to move forward as a nation and to move forward as a world is to sort of being a great critical thinker, being uh, open to more open minded each other's beliefs. So th that's one of the things we're going to be exploring uh, in our first part of our class. You know, when we write our first essay, when we look at our first couple of myths, when we actually look at our first readings is uh, basically critical thinker, you know, like thinking about yourself, you know, you as a critical reader, thinker and writer and, and how to improve on it. You know, what are some of the things that you're strong in? What are some things that you, you're weak in? Or it may, are you really open-minded? Are, are you actually one who listens or are you basically pretty stubborn? Does that really affect your critical thinking or if you're really stubborn in your views and you don't really listen to others? So just kind of, we'll think a little, a lot about that and hopefully try to improve our critical thinking, reading and writing. And basically that, that's one of the big goals and that'll help you not only in this class, just anywhere you're at. Well, you know, when we go out in the wild world, you know, tomorrow or tonight in social media, or even in the future, trying to solve the world's problems or trying to make this a better world. Critical thinking is really important. So that's really one exciting thing about this class, I feel, is, hey, let's try to be a critical thinker in high school or actually move into college. Uh, th think about that and, and always try to move forward or progress as a critical thinker all the way until the day uh, we pass away and beyond. So uh, that'll be one great thing. Okay, so basically, uh, you, you have probably read or maybe are about to read our first reading, the first 15 pages they toss about uh, the myths and being a critical reader and a lot of other English topics like uh, active reading and basically uh, obstacles to critical thinking or what happens if you encounter people who disagree with you or what happens if you have a dialogue in class when someone comes and has views that you disagree with. How do you react? You know, it's always going to test you, right? Are you going to be open-minded or are you just going to shut them out? What do you think, right? So just, it just uh, some ideas to get you really thoughtful. And hopefully some of those ideas as you discuss and read about them, that will kind of maybe go into your writing. Hey, you know, I, I want to be a more complex writer, not just be a simple writer where I just give an example to support my view. Well, that's not really the real world, as we say. The real world is 